Hey guys, Garrett here from iOS Pro today. I'm going to be doing the transparent iPad mod today on the first screen. So this is one I've already done it on off camera for testing. As you guys can see, it looked really cool that way. And my iPad 4 was already cracked to begin with, even before I used my iPad 3rd gen to fix my iPad 4. All right, like that. So let's get started. So before I get started, we'll need a few tools in order to do the transparent iPad mod. So I'm one of the very first people on YouTube to ever do this. I've seen so many tech videos from 2013 up to now, and no one has ever covered transparent iPad mods or ever, any iPad mod before. So I'm one of the very first people to ever do this. Okay, so what we'll need first is a suction cup. This will be used to pry up the screen as they're heating the adhesive. Next thing, a fellow pest screwdriver, this is the most important tool. You'll need this to undo the screen clips and to scrape away the vinyl. So, cool. All right, so next up is a spudger. This is what you use to release the glue while you're prying up the adhesive or the screen, I meant. And the last thing, if you have a LTE iPad, you'll need a SIM card injection tool. But since mine is Wi-Fi, I don't need to do that. All right, so let me move my iPad 4 out of the way so I don't get just break it up anymore than it is now. See, this is my iPad Air first generation. I haven't used this iPad in quite a while, running iOS. When I go in settings here, see, it's running iOS 12.5.5. So it's been quite a while since I used this iPad. And since my home button doesn't work anyways, I'm going to be using the home gesture from the iPhone 10 to do this. All right, so now what I'm going to do is power down the iPad, which is very important while doing this. It don't break anything. All right, so with the iPad power down, first thing is you'll get an eye opener from iFixit or a heating plate to heat up the adhesive. But since my adhesive is already broken and weak, I don't need to do that. See, all I have to do is go over from this edge, I press down, so you have to gently pry up like this. Now we're gonna take our spudger and gently go through here and release this glue. Just hold it like that. So I've learned a little trick. If something gets stuck, you just gently push down on one and gently pull on the other, and it'll slowly release itself. It's pretty cool. And there we go. The iPad Air 1 has now opened just like that. But every iPad will be a little different. So if you're doing this on an iPad Pro, for example, the 2018 iPad Pro, the newer, the screen kill will be somewhere in the middle. That's what I know. On the minis, they'll be in the corner. Just to let you guys know about that. All right, so now I'm going to do is put the screen and everything else on side right here like this. So this is what it's going to look like now. So now what we're going to do is take our Philip Hesco driver and release the four screws on the corners. So I'm going to do that now. So basically each screw is size coordinated to each screw slot. I just want to let you guys know about that. So sometimes these screws can be a little stubborn. There we go. Got one out. The second screw is on this corner right here. Sorry if I'm bumping my camera. It's very hard for me to do this while I'm filming. Okay, there's the second screw. Then this top one is the third screw, but my fourth screw already came out, so I don't need to do that. All right, so there's the screw. Sometimes these screws can be a little finicky sometimes. All right, so if, if you guys have a four screw in this corner, then you'll have to release that. So now the screen will just come up just like this. So let me go ahead and reposition my iPad here. So you guys see exactly what I'm doing. All right, so here we go. So let me go and reposition everything. And I'll come back when I'm done. So I'm back and I successfully got everything fully repositioned. So now, once you get the screws off the corners here, and you'll gently pry up on this blade like this and set it down like this. See, this cable goes right around here like this. That is totally normal. So now what I should do is release the screws holding in the shield. So let me zoom in so you guys see this. See, on the shield here, there's three screws. One here, two here, and three there. But my screw fell out during battery check, so I don't have to worry. Let me go and just release this now. But you gotta be very careful not to puncture the battery. That is the most important part about doing this repair. It's very hard for me to do this while filming. I'm doing my very best here. All right, so there's the second screw. But it says my third screw came out. I don't need to do, worry about that. See, but the shield will come up with the connector, just like that. Let me zoom back out. And there we go, there's the LCD. Let me go and get this out of the way here. All right, so now what we're gonna do is disconnect this touch screen, which is two little cables, like one right here, and a second one right here, just like that. And now the screen come away, just like this. And 
if you guys haven't, if your home button cable isn't broken like mine is, then you have to disconnect the third cable, which is right here, so the lock cap connector. But since my home button broke back in 2017, I don't have to worry about that. All right, so we're done with this for now. So we're gonna move this out of the way so I don't damage it any further. Like it, like the home button is now, because I don't want to break it anymore. All right, so now what we're gonna do is start scraping away the glue in the adhesive. But I would recommend removing the home button flex cable, which is right down here. So if you haven't already done this for the first time, the glue will be very strong. All right, so now we're gonna do is push the home button straight out like this. Don't lose this. So if yours isn't broken like mine, you don't have to be, you have to be careful. But since mine is already broken, I didn't have to be careful. All right, so now we're gonna do is take our screwdriver and let me just reposition my camera here. So why don't we zoom in here so I can show you guys what I'm gonna do. Basically, we're gonna take our and push like this and start scraping away the glue with adhesive, kind of like this, as you guys can see. So when you guys do this, you can actually see it's coming out the other side, just like this. So this does take some time. I'm back and what I decided to do was scrape away the old adhesive while doing the transparent mod. It makes it a little easier to get off. It comes off really easily. And what I recommend is double-sided adhesive tape. That would work best to hold the screen down after this mod is finished. But a disclaimer here, this gold ring in the gold all the way around the screen that connects to this cable right here, that is the sensor for the touch screen. And that is the sensor called the digitizer. And that's what allows the center finger while you touch the screen. If you break this and chip this area or crack it, then the screen will not work anymore. So it takes a lot of patience and a lot of skill and timing for us to work. And over here, while you're scraping, go around the cables. If you damage one of these cables, then your screen will stop working. Sorry, my watch went off. See, if you go all the way around here and avoid the screen, it would not look as good with the screen part, but it'll still look good anyways. So let me go ahead and time lapse this now. So after scrubbing off the vinyl for like a couple of seconds or so, the adhesive just came right off. It was pretty cool. So once they get the adhesive dug up, they get this peel off gently, and it'll just come right off. So as you guys can see, I managed to creep away some of this vinyl. See, this is how it looks from the underside. It looks from the other side. It looks really cool. So basically what I'm doing is taking my screwdriver and gently, not too much force, but just enough where you can scrape off the old, old vinyl. It takes practice and timing, but once you get the hang of it, it's pretty easy. See, I'm slicing through the old adhesive just like this. But well, make sure you don't cut this layer right here. That is the digitizer. So you can actually go to a limit where it'll just come right off. See, I'm running, going along the edge of it, but not too far in. Otherwise, I'll break the touch screen. So go and time lapse this again. After scraping away the vinyl for a few minutes, as you guys see, it's not easy, but it looks pretty cool so far. See, I'm basically scraping away all the adhesive goes all the way around except for the screen cable area, just to be safe. But along the home button is where the hardest part is. You gotta be very gentle with this. So for the home button, it only scraped properly in one direction. So you gotta watch out for see how it did that. I basically scraped very gently. I didn't go too fast. Make sure you're going like this, tilted at an angle. See how my screwdriver is? So very gently. And there we go. You guys see I scraped away the home button vinyl. It looks sort of like that. So let me go and time lapse this more. So after like 30 bit to scraping, 
And you guys can see how much I've gotten so far. All the way down here looks really great from here. See, so far it looks really good. You can see this outline right here it's creating. I didn't scrape, that's the digitizer sensor. If I scrape too far, I'll break it. So I cannot go too far. So I can only go around the outer edge like this. So I've started to work around here and up here, but I did chip the glass just a little bit in, a, in like a tiny spot is right here. So I have to be careful there. So there are some risks I take while doing this, risk breaking the glass or anything else. So let me go ahead and time up some. So after scraping around the edges for quite a long time, this is how it looks right now, see? After scraping along the edges that I could access without damaging it, you guys see it's creating this ring around the edge. And this little bit right here, the reason why I did, did not do that is because that's where the screen cables are. Now I did not want to damage them, so I skipped this area. But everywhere else is great. So this will allow you to see where your screen cables are located, including the ring for the touchscreen. See this ring that is created around here? That is the sensor for the touch screen. It looks really cool that way. So let me go and go and finish this up. Now I'll come back, I'm done. So I'm back and after three hours of non-stop scraping, I finally finished the screen. And here's what it looks like now. With all the vinyl taken off, let me zoom out a little bit. You guys can see how cool this looks. Basically, this ring area right here that forms around it after taking off all the vinyl is the sensor for the touch screen. You can now see where it's located. Same for this cables area. Now you can see where the cables are located which makes things easier. Comment below if Apple should do transparent screens or not, because the way they do it now with no transparency is kind of boring. Cool though, but kind of boring, but it would be cooler if Apple made their own transparent screen so you can see in your device without having to open it up. That would be a cool idea. All right, so to be just to make things quicker, I went ahead and reinstalled the home button already. And since my cable broke in 2017, I'm not gonna be reinstalling that cable, but I will be fixing that later in the future. So to connect it, we're going to take our touchscreen cable and just get it lined up perfectly and then go and press it down back and I successfully got the touchscreen cables all reconnected. So now I'm going to do is reconnect the LCD connector. You got to be very careful with the LCD. It's very fragile. So make sure the connector just lines up and there we go. So now I'm going to turn the LCD like this, setting it down like this will allow me to reconnect the cable, the screen shield for the connectors. So I'm going to take my shield and put it down just like this, making sure it all lines up perfectly. Okay, so it takes a little bit of time. All right, there we go. So now I'm going to take my screwdriver and get the screws to put back in. So this does take a little bit of practice here. Give me a sec. Got one screw, which goes right over here. Sometimes this does take a little bit of practice. Okay, that's one screw in successfully. Now I'm going to go in and get the other screw in. I'll come back when I'm done. So I'm back and successfully got the shield reconnected. Now I'm going to gently push my touchscreen uh, LCD I meant down. Just like this. And now I'm going to put the screws back in. But the annoying part about these screws is they're sized by different length. Quite annoying, actually. It just takes a little bit of practice to get these in. When you're using a magnetic screwdriver, it makes the job a little bit harder. Okay, so that's one screw. Now I'm gonna get the other screw, the secondary screw. Put back in. Sometimes these screws can be a little stubborn sometimes when you're using a magnetic screwdriver. Yeah, you see, this was the wrong length. This actually goes down here. So I'll come back when I get the screws in. So I'm back and I successfully got the screws for the LCD in place. Now the hard part, getting the touchscreen to align up properly. This is the hard part. You gotta make sure this camera piece here aligns up where it slots. Once it aligns up, then you gently push the screen down. But since I'm gonna be replacing the battery soon, I'm not gonna put some adhesive there. But if you guys' iPad works just fine, then you don't need to do that. So this does take a little bit of practice. 
Okay, there we go. The LCD is now in place. Now I'm going to test it. Three, two, one. Success. The iPad works. So now I'll come back when it's done booting up. Okay, guys, so I'm back and my iPad's finished booting up. And as you guys can see, my iPad fully works on the very first try. So I had no fails in this video whatsoever. See, the control center, the mute, the, the virtual home button works. So I actually don't need the home button because I could just use gestures to do this. But I will have to make it so this is the touch key use theory, unfortunately, because the home button broke. Yeah, so I'm going to be fixing that home button soon. See? Home button doesn't work. But in all, it still works great. 12.5.5. So that is the transparent iPad mod. Let me put it next to my old iPad 4. See? Next to my old iPad 4. You guys can see both look cool. But I think the iPad Air looks cooler. Because you can see all the speakers down here. See the speakers that are down here? The Wi-Fi antennas, the camera, the headphone jack, the front camera. You can see all that. It's really cool. You can even see the screws for where the screens go as well. It's really impressive. All right, so that's pretty much it for this video. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. This video. Peace out.